Welcome to the Studio Light development with Angular. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of our Studio Light open source project so you can refactor the entire application to accommodate your own business logic. The intended audience for this video are either JavaScript developers that are already very familiar with Angular or enterprise members that are interested in hiring a JavaScript developer to customize Studio Light for them. I'll start the video by showing you how to set up the environment. Next, we'll dive into the reactive store via NGRX and the yellow paper library. We'll cover the synchronization with the red paper SDK. The entire solution, of course, is based on component based design, which is part of Angular. And by the time we're done with this, you'll know exactly what you need to do to be able to refactor Studio Lite and create a custom solution for digital signage. Now, the great thing about Angular is that it is an opinionated framework. This means that if you hired an Angular developer, he will be able to enjoy rapid development and essentially already understanding 70% of what you need to do to be able to refactor Studio Lite. In fact, the idea behind this video is just to close this small gap of 30% explaining the unique requirements of Studio Lite and its architecture. But 70% of the design would already be covered just by knowing Angular. So with that, let's begin. If you'd like to play around with Studio Lite but don't want to have to create an account, just go to this short URL, goo.gl forward slash rru309. You'll be able to jump directly into the same application I've shown you and start playing with Studio Lite without having to have any credentials. So I just want to start by showing Studio Lite and some of its capabilities. You can see right here that I have an existing campaign. I can go and modify the campaign. I have different channels, switch between the channels. I can uh, go and view the same content, but in a list format, change the order of the content. I can change the duration of the content. I can change the order of the timelines. Let's go ahead and create a brand new campaign. Click on a new campaign. Set the orientation, set the resolution, set our screen divisions. You can add other screen divisions as well. Add content to a particular channel. We can preview the presentation live inside the studio. We can also view everything as a timeline change the content on the particular channel. We also have the resources where we manage all the content and the different videos and files and images. We also have the ability to uh, set scenes, which are canvases where we can actually uh, go and add content uh, and set the X, Y position of each component within the scene. So I can add more content right here, or I can just go ahead and add from the template you can see right here, we have a lot of pre-made content for you already. Go ahead and download something. Then we can edit it. Here I switched to stations where you can remote manage your signage players and their properties. You can see if they're on or off. Faster queue is where you can manage users that are in line for queue management. So you can see I can call customers, service customers. Studio Pro, that's where you can upgrade to the free or enterprise, the help with the video tutorials, and everything's part of Angular, of course, and you can log out. Also, you'll notice that if I go to the different modules while in development mode, so you'll notice here in red, the different component names. So it's easier for you to be able to jump directly to components. So for example, if you wanted to evaluate a particular component, for example, the campaign editor, I can just switch to my code, look for campaign editor, it's right here, and I can modify the file. So while in development, this really helps as you can see the different component names. So go ahead and switch to github.com forward slash born to net forward slash studio dash light. Click on this download button and go ahead and copy to clipboard this URL so we can git clone the project. Next, go ahead and download git. If you don't already have it installed, make sure you download and install it for your operating system. Next, let's go ahead and follow the steps. So you can see right here, if we scroll down on the same page, you can see the link that we just uh, copied into memory. So let's just go ahead and copy this whole thing a little bit easier. Switch into our terminal and paste. This will download the entire library, Studio Lite, the entire application to your local computer. Next, let's go ahead and copy this. So we'll switch into the new Studio Lite directory and install the latest version of Angular CLI. And once that's done, all we have left is just to type npm install. So it completed installing the Angular CLI. 
and next just type npm i or npm install this will install all the libraries and that's it at this point we're done and all there's left to do is just open the browser next go ahead and launch the chrome browser and type in the address of localhost port 4208 which is just running locally within our computer and that's it all this is running now within our local environment and you can log in and start refactoring the application so the key to any application obviously is its data and as far as our studio light we store all the data in the ngrx store so the first thing i want to do is i want to go ahead and talk about the ngrx chrome plugin powered by redux if we switch to the state tree we can see that we have our ms database and our app db so this is where we store all of our data for the application. Now the data is split into two parts. The first part resides in our SDK and we nicknamed this SDK the Red Pepper SDK. And then the second part is going to be the AppDB, which we nicknamed Yellow Pepper. And the beauty of this is that if you wanted to change the campaign name and just changes this key, everything would be taken care of for you. So this would be automatically saved to the server as well as the UI would get updated. This is the beauty of NGRX since we're talking about a reactive configuration. You don't have to worry about the UI. You only have to worry about changing the store and this propagates onto the UI. And so if MS database is really um, the local reflection of the cloud, then what do we need AppDB for, the yellow pepper? So the yellow pepper, essentially what it does, it holds references and state in memory. These are things that are only important right now, but they don't necessarily get serialized to the server. So for example, you can see the total stations and the stations that are on and off for your signage players this is something that is just in memory. We don't really necessarily keep it in a database. Things like the live log, things like the username that's currently authenticated, the user model. Most of the time you will be working with the red pepper. Therefore, you'll be working with this SDK segment over here. So next, let's talk about the architecture of the application, how everything comes together. Over here at the center, we have our component. This is just UI component that the user actually interacts with. This is when you developed Angular, mostly you'll develop these type of components. And over here to the right, we have our uh, online, which is essentially just a cloud, our servers online. And next, you can see right here that we have the NGRX reducer. So here I switched into my reducer again. I've shown you this earlier. Both the yellow pepper and the red pepper are part of the reducer. This is their NGRX store. If you are familiar with Angular, you react to changes that happen in the store. And just so remember that both the yellow pepper and the red pepper are inside the reducer. And so if both uh, the red pepper and the yellow pepper resides in the NGRX store, you might be wondering why do we need this red pepper service? And so the way it works is that when you, for example, rename a campaign, for example, what you do is you rename this campaign uh, from uh, campaign A to campaign B, you make those changes in the red pepper service. You don't make those changes in the reducer. You make those changes in the red pepper service. As soon as you click on file save, those changes would get saved on the, into the cloud. And so what's going to happen next is that you have to set a commit. So you can see right here, this commit, you have to tell the red pepper service to commit the changes. And this in turn will synchronize all the changes from the red pepper service into the NGRX store. So the single source of truth for our campaign information, timeline channels, and so on is actually the red pepper service. But what happens is that when you make changes and you make them at the level of the red pepper service, you then will always submit a commit. And this, this commit that you submit will go ahead and propagate those changes into the NGRX store, the database that I've shown you earlier. And in turn, since NGRX is a reactive store, it would go ahead and update the UI, the components. Uh, so you don't have to worry about any of that. You just have to, for example, again, rename a campaign. The commit will propagate into the reducer. The reducer would update the component and the user would see the latest version of the campaign name. So let's go ahead and view it in action. You can see right here that I'm looking at the campaign properties and over here I'm saving to the store the campaign changes. In fact, I'm changing the campaign name, the playlist mode, kiosk timeline D and kiosk mode for different records. So you'll notice I set those changes with the red pepper service. So I'm not updating the NGRX store just yet. I'm doing it uh, right here. So the changes are going to happen right here with the red pepper service. But then as soon as I'm done, I'll go ahead and submit a Redux commit. And as soon as I do the Redux commit, those changes will jump over from the red pepper into the NGRX store. At that point, upgrade my UI from the store uh, reducer state. So now that we understand the relationship between the red pepper service and the NGRX reducer and the commit of changes between the two, let's talk about the yellow pepper service. So the yellow pepper service, what it does essentially is just a helper library 
for RxJS methods to slice the store. So let's go ahead and jump into this library and talk about some of the helper methods uh, there. You can see here that we're listening to uh, listen to scene or block selected changed to a particular segment. In this case, we're listening to two separate segments and we're combining the latest changes of each one of these segments. If you're not familiar with RxJS, this is definitely something that you're going to want to get into. It is part of Angular, so uh, RxJS is what this yellow paper service is all about. If we just go ahead and uh, jump into somewhere in the code that's uh, using this particular call, you can see that we're listening to, again, uh, you can see right here the yellow paper service, listen to scene or block, select the changed, and then we are reacting. So the last thing we didn't cover are the effects. Effects are ways for you to use NGRX with asynchronous calls. So here I went ahead and opened the app DB effects. I'm looking for example here for the load faster queue analytic effect. You can see that what I'm doing here, this is an HTTP call, something that happens asynchronously. We're listening to a particular type and you can see right here, this is the type. And then as soon as we receive a response, push it directly into our reducer, which propagates through the entire application. Anyone that's listening to those changes via the yellow pepper would react to those changes. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Be sure to go to GitHub, fork the project and get started. If you have any questions, let us know. Thank you.